Julian Assange is a wanted man because he's published classified information given to him by whistleblowers that reveal the crimes and corruption of government officials around the world, not just in the United States. But it is the U.S., the supposed beacon, beacon of freedom and democracy and press freedom around the globe that wants him extradited to the United States for the crime of publishing. If he has interfered with the interests of some of the most powerful people in the world by revealing their machinations to the public. And that's why Julian Assange has been a refugee in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for the past six years, though he has not been charged with a crime by either the United Kingdom or Sweden. He knows that the second he steps back onto British territory, he will be arrested and sent to the U.S. where he is unlikely to receive a fair trial and will likely spend the rest of his life in prison. There is almost certainly a sealed indictment of Julian Assange. Certainly there is a grand jury going on in Alexandria, Virginia courthouse. That's going to be the focus of our discussion today because the powerful interest that who he has exposed, they want him to pay. It is a historic test of press freedom. The corporate media, which once profited from him, has now abandoned Julian Assange, and they could face the same threat to their freedom to publish classified information were he to be arrested. So we're going to look at the headlines of the past week, and the main headline and the one we're going to be focused on happened uh, today, earlier today in the U.S., in a courtroom in Alexandria, Virginia. Chelsea Manning, one of the uh, most important sources of a leak to WikiLeaks, the video that's known around the world as collateral murder. Chelsea Manning was a private uh, in the U.S. Army, an intelligence analyst, and leaked disturbing videos of what appeared to be prima facie evidence of U.S. war crimes. It was given to WikiLeaks and published and pretty much put WikiLeaks on the map. Uh, Chelsea Manning was then exposed by someone she had put trust in, and she was arrested, put on trial, and convicted of uh, under the Espionage Act and sent to prison for 35 years. While in prison, uh, she was tortured, uh, sent, held in solitary confinement, which was considered torture and uh, otherwise badly mistreated. And uh, Barack Obama, as he was leaving office at the beginning of uh, 2018, 2017, I should say, uh, commuted Chelsea Manning's sentence. In other words, what she had served to that point was going to be all that she served plus four months. So four months after Obama left office, Chelsea Manning walked out of prison and was a free woman. And uh, at the time, the White House said that they were commuting her sentence because they and they drew a distinction with Ed Snowden saying that, uh, that there were stark differences. Just Josh Ernest, one of the White House spokesmen in Obama's administration, said that there was a, quote, pretty stark difference between uh, Miss Manning's case and Mr. Snowden's. That's the New York Times. Um, and Chelsea Manning, quote, is somebody who went through the military criminal justice process, was exposed to due process, was found guilty, was sentenced for her crimes, and she acknowledged wrongdoing, Ernest said. Mr. Snowden instead fled into the arms of an adversary and has sought refuge in a country that most recently made a concerted effort to undermine confidence in our democracy. We could talk for three hours just about that statement, Elizabeth, I think. So for, for one thing, uh, Ed Snowden made it very clear why he did not go through that uh, so-called uh, uh, whistleblowing process because he had seen what had happened to Tom Drake uh, and decided and to Chelsea Manning and decided uh, to not do that. And second of all, uh, Snowden, of course, was did not flee into the arms of America's adversary. He wound up stuck in the airport in Moscow and, and route somewhere else. And that's why he wound up in Russia. Uh, but it's very convenient to blame uh, Snowden for going to the so-called adversary, Russia, and uh, the whole nonsense about uh, Russia making a concerted effort to undermine confidence in our democracy when the American ruling class does that every day. Uh, so we could talk about this quite a lot. But uh, I think we're going to have a little bit more that you're going to read, I believe, from CNN. Is that right? Right. And 
basically Chelsea Manning this morning was jailed for refusing to testify against Assange. That's the really big news of the day. And from CNN, we have a quote saying that a judge held Chelsea Manning in contempt and that she is being detained. And her lawyer says, quote, as everyone, everybody knows, Chelsea has tremendous courage. Our primary concern at this point is her health while she is confined and we will be paying close attention. And that was from uh, Moira Meltzer Cohen, uh, Manning's attorney, who told that uh, was uh, made that statement to reporters outside a federal courthouse in Virginia. That was this. That was this morning in mm -hmm. Virginia. Manning uh, can be held, CNN goes on to say, for the term of the grand jury and not longer than 18 months. Quoting Meltzer Cohen, uh, Manning's lawyer, asked if Manning was prepared to stay in prison for the full 18 months. Meltzer Cohen said, quote, we're not there yet. She added that it was quite likely that they would appeal the order. Manning refused to answer questions about her 2010 public disclosures of military and diplomatic secrets before a grand jury earlier this week. Her presence before the grand jury this week suggests prosecutors continue to investigate and pursue charges against Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks. And uh, as Joe was explaining just a minute ago, Manning is a former army intelligence analyst who spent nearly seven years in prison after she was arrested for the massive leak to WikiLeaks. She was sentenced to 35 years in prison, but that was commuted by President Barack Obama in 2017. Now, some reactions, WikiLeaks official tweet said, and I quote, well, this was three hours ago. Will whistleblower Chelsea Manning has been placed in jail to coerce her to testify against Julian Assange. Whistleblowers are now being forced to testify against journalists. A new angle in the attack on media freedom. WikiLeaks also tweeted, note that Manning is not jailed as a, quote, punishment. She has formerly been jailed to coerce her into testifying against our journalists, including Assange, for publishing the truth about the U.S. government. She will remain in jail until she breaks and complies or wins on appeal. We also have a tweet from Glenn Greenwald, who said five hours ago, Quote, this is disgusting and all due to the efforts of the DOJ to criminalize the publication of classified information in order to prosecute WikiLeaks and Assange, something all press freedom groups, major newspapers, and even the Obama DOJ said would be a major threat to press freedom. And joining uh, today, I believe we'll just continue to discuss some of these events as we move forward through the vigil. So. That's correct. So we have a lot to, we can unpack there, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, the This was not unexpected, first of all. Chelsea had come out yesterday and told the press in front of the courthouse in Alexandria that she would likely be going to jail because she refused to answer questions of a secret process. The grand jury, she criticized the entire grand jury process, saying there was only one other country in the world that still had grand juries. So there is a matter of principle here about not accepting the grand jury as a legitimate <coughs> legal forum because, of course, uh, in a trial, which Chelsea Manning went through in 2010, you're obviously it's in public and you're allowed a defense. We're in a grand jury, it's secret, and you're not allowed a defense. So she, she cited her first, fourth, and sixth amendment rights to not answer questions in the grand jury. And I find the sixth amendment one a particular interest because that one is the one that guarantees Americans under the sixth amendment of the constitution uh, a public trial and a right to a defense. So she had that, of course, in the trial, in her court-martial, it was a military court, of course, that sentenced her to 35 years in prison, not a civilian one, whereas today it's a civilian a grand jury, but in the grand jury, those Sixth Amendment rights are not guaranteed. All you have is the prosecutor present and the grand jurors, jurors and the prosecutor will just <clears throat> let, set out some kind of evidence to... Uh, reach the bar of, of getting an indictment. And that's not a, obviously a, a conviction. So the amount of evidence and the fact that it can't be challenged is quite significant. It is just convincing jurors that we have enough evidence, the government says, to indict someone, to formally accuse someone. Uh, and that is what they seem to be working on for Assange. We know that in that same courtroom last month, the uh, if this indictment, whatever stage it's in, it remains sealed. Uh, the judge, Leonie Brinkman, denied uh, to admit that the indictment even exists because the government, uh, even though they admitted they made a mistake in revealing that there was, in fact, there were, in fact, charges against Assange, their 
maintaining the fiction that there's no indictment. And now we know for sure there is one because of this grand jury, Elizabeth. So um, she did not want to testify uh, in, or to give testimony or evidence, rather, uh, answer questions in a secret court without her Sixth Amendment rights being guaranteed. Right. And I think that that is incredibly brave, as many, many people have pointed out on social media and elsewhere, that this is a further example of Chelsea Manning's, um, you know, courage in the face of this type of uh, persecution of, of, of whistleblowers and uh, media outlets in general overall. And it's really, it puts, and I know we discussed this last week, but it really puts the um, establishment press in a very interesting situation because these leaks that are being discussed in this grand jury are the ones that most establishment outlets supported and applauded in 2010. So they are now on a, on a footing that has nothing to do with Russiagate, has nothing to do with uh, Donald Trump or the events of 2016 and goes right to the heart of, of WikiLeaks's publications that they themselves supported, as well as the fact that this the outcome of this issue will directly affect their ability to publish in future. So they should be very concerned and, and about this development for sure. Yes, and that's a whole other issue we could we will explore the fact that the media has con continued to conflate this grand jury process with the Mueller investigation, and they have absolutely nothing to do with one another. This has to do with, as you, uh, I think, disobedient media reported quite some time ago now, that this is about the 2010 leak and nothing to do with the 2016 election, although we saw Rachel Maddow continuing to lie about that on the air because it would undermine everything she's, a lot of things she's been saying. So you got to keep the fiction going. But I, w I want to know, what do you think that, uh, you know, she was being asked? I mean, she gave hours and hours of testimony in her trial and her court martial. These questions were asked already. It, se it seems from the WikiLeaks tweet and for everything we know, which is not a hell of a lot, that they're clearly going over again uh, what happened uh, when she leaked this, uh, these videos and other documents to WikiLeaks. Then they're trying to get her, it seems like, to uh, incriminate Assange some way, whether that would be whether Assange asked for a certain documents, whether he participated in uh, the leak or not. Uh, what do you think about that? We were only speculating here. Yeah, I agree. I think that this was probably an attempt to create a situation or create some sort of um, inference that uh, Julian Assange had solicited the information that Chelsea Manning leaked uh, from from her testimony, I believe, in 2013. That was never um, you know, established. As far as I am aware, there, there was never any, uh, you know, but established evidence that she definitely spoke to Julian Assange. So I think that they're really trying to create that link where it possibly does not exist. And so I, I believe that's basically the heart of what they would have been trying to ask Chelsea Manning. Right. And she's refused to go down that road simply because on principle, the, she doesn't believe in the grand jury process. And number two, as WikiLeaks pointed out in their tweet, this is a source being forced to testify against um, the reporter or the, the publication that the source was working with. And uh, that is, uh, you know, there's all kinds of dangerous things happening here legally uh, and in terms of press freedom. And, 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 and we've become accepting of this, it seems like, that the, we've reached a stage where the stakes are so high because of the knowledge of the activities of these people that WikiLeaks has brought us that they will go beyond normal judicial procedures, it appears, to crush WikiLeaks. For example, as I've been pointing out, uh, technically, they there is, a ch uh, under the Espionage Act, there is a way to charge a publisher or a journalist for merely possessing and then disseminating classified information. But we've not seen that happen for a very long time because politically it's uh, just not uh, a very good thing for an administration to do because it appears to go against the First Amendment where the First Amendment uh, pro prohibits the government from censoring a publication. After publication of classified information, the government is free to prosecute. And that appears to be what is happening here. And where, whereas the Obama administration not only commuted uh, Chelsea Manning's sentence, but also uh, decided not to prosecute Julian Assange for what the, their, his DRG attorney said was the New York Times problem, which, as Glenn, Glenn Greenwald pointed out in his tweet, means that if uh, WikiLeaks is 
prosecuted for publishing classified information, that opens up prosecution to the New York Times or CNN or any corporate media or anybody, any outlet that publishes classified information or that even repeats that classified information uh, in a tweet, let's say. I mean, this is how absurd it can get. That anybody retweeted anything that WikiLeaks published that was classified uh, under the Espionage Act could <laughs> theoretically also be liable because we are not allowed to have it. Even though it's out in the public domain, it's still considered by the government classified. I mean, can you imagine if we reach an actual situation where we would almost be looking at a reality that mirrors that infamous statement from CNN? I believe it was Cuomo who said that, you know, you're not allowed to look at these these documents. Only we can do that. I mean, in that case, even they wouldn't be allowed to do it. So absolutely. And in fact, he was, I think, talking about the emails from he uh, was. which are not cla- which are never classified. I'm talking about right. not the, not the uh, Hillary Clinton server, private server emails, but the DNC, right. the Podesta emails. We're not classified. Uh, they were private property of those people. They were stolen as a crime, okay, but they weren't classified. Uh, the idea that uh, that in that case they could not prosecute Assange for publishing classified information. That's another thing, actually, that I, I don't think I've ever thought of before. If they want to get him, it's got to be, as you pointed out in your reporting earlier, it has to be on the Chelsea Manning era leaks because that was classified, obviously. And it needed to be known by the public because this was evidence of what appears to be war crimes, killing of Reuters journalists. And then some good Samaritans who came to try to help those journalists were gunned down. And this is in black and white, literally in black and white video from uh, pilots, American pilots who were committing uh, at someone's orders uh, what appears to be a, a war crime. Certainly that video should have showed up in a courtroom with those pilots and their superiors sitting in the docket. And uh, instead it was Chelsea Manning who wound up being tried and convicted. And this is the perversion of justice that we see here. Absolutely. No, to, to punish and to prosecute the, the messengers, the conveyors of true information about crimes committed by the government, uh, that really is an indictment on the American uh, justice system and the legal system being used to absolutely pervert justice completely. I don't think anyone could really argue otherwise. I think that, and I, you know, it goes back to that Orwell quote that many, many have been tweeting in relation to Manning is when, when you are punishing the people who expose liars, then you're being run by, by criminals. An unfortunate conclusion that we would have to make, I think. Um, and, uh, she could stay in jail now for up to 18 months, according to her lawyer, uh, or for if she breaks, as WikiLeaks point out. She's not been convicted of a crime. There was no sentencing. There was no uh, jury here. This is She's just being thrown in jail because she was refusing to talk, refusing to cooperate. Uh, it's contempt of court. And if she decided tomorrow to speak, I think they'll let her out, but she's not going to do that, it looks like and could stay in there for the length of the jury, grand jury, which has been going on, it appears, since 2010. So it's a nine-year sitting grand jury. Or if that doesn't end, then the full 18 months. What I don't know is, and I don't know if you can answer this either, is if she's released after the 18 months, and then they try to subpoena her again, and she refuses again, could they throw her again? in jail for another 18 months. That's something I, I just don't know legally if that's the case, whether you can only be held in contempt once in a certain case, or they could try to do this over again. But uh, for every indication is that this is a, a, a absolutely an act of courage to give up her personal freedom, simply not to participate in what she sees to be a unjust process of secret grand jury and not to be forced to testify against uh, WikiLeaks and being tricked up, tripped up to say something or, um, you know, it didn't work. It, if they threatened jail, which they did, because now she's in jail, in order to make her speak, it certainly did not work. Absolutely. Had- Absolutely. I think that the amount of courage that she's shown, um, not only now, but previously, and the fact that she's willing to go back to a, a state of imprisonment to stand on those principles is amazing when you when you compare that with the type of you know level of integrity or lack thereof that we see in mainstream press pundits you know the mad elves of the world i think comparing the two really is stark and it, it gives you some understanding of of just how empty a lot of the the outlets are out there that that 
uh, present themselves as standing up against the powerful. I think this is the real <laughs> example of it. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's a joke that they uh, think that they're standing against. The, they are the powerful. They're the mouthpiece of the powerful. That is obviously, and they're well compensated for that. And she's sitting in a in a jail cell somewhere. Um, what what I don't get, and is that as she's pointed out in her earlier statement, I think the day before, that she's already answered these questions. It was hours and hours of testimony during her court martial. What are they trying to ask her that she hasn't already been asked? W what exactly could they try to get out of her? Uh, so I think going into that grand jury, you, she must have felt like this was not going to be on the up and up somehow, or that there was going to be some effort to, to intimidate her, to get her to say something that uh, could incriminate Assange, because they're going to go over the same old questions, try to pick apart her testimony from earlier. Uh, it's, it's very odd. And it's, well, another thing that's odd is they're denying that this indictment even exists. And yet now we know there's a grand jury against June Assange. What else could she be testifying about? So, of course, yeah. I see. think that it's it. the only answer I can come to as, as far as why they would be doing this, why they would want to bring her in to repeat the type of testimony that she gave already in 2013, I believe. I, the only answer I can come up with is they would be trying to get her to make some statement that even when just when squinted at, you know, through a glass would be able to be twisted into evidence that Assange, you know, asked her to leak or encouraged her to make additional leaks or something, something of that nature. That's the only conclusion I can come to. But of course, that's pure speculation. Yeah, because uh, yes, that is speculation. But if they want to get uh, Assange for uh, having for anything, they would probably want to nail him for trying to for participating in the leak itself, in the theft of the government property. Because even though they could use the Espionage Act, as I pointed out, they most likely do not want to do that, as previous administrations didn't do. But if they can get uh, somehow some evidence to show that Assange had participated in the theft, then they think they could stand on that. This, again, is my uh, interpretation. Uh, what's interesting is that Robert Perry, of course, the founder of Consortium News, who died in January of last year, uh, I found an article of his from a couple of years ago in defense of uh, Julian Assange, in which he wrote that in his own work as one of the premier investigative journalists in American history, really, having brought uh, the Iran-Contra scandal to light uh, for the Associated Press, Bob wrote that in the course of working with his many sources, that he often encouraged them to to, to get information that he needed so that this is part of the process of an investigative journalist. Now, I have no idea what the relation, whether they had any contact at all, Assange and uh, Manning, right? Uh, we don't know that they even talked to there was, uh, uh, we don't even know that, but the idea that a journalist would talk to his or her source and try to get them to fill in you know, you're working on a piece and you need uh, you need uh, uh, some information to fill in a gap or several gaps. And you're going to ask your source, do you can you provide anything that answers these questions? Now, is that participating in a crime? I mean, of stealing government data. So in other words, Bob is saying that this is also uh, very common and routine behavior for some for a journalist to be working on a story to try to get their sources, if they were leaking classified information, uh, to give them more. That's what you need. You want more. So it's uh, beyond troubling this. 